This is Fred the Wolf, and this is a YouTube exclusive video review for 2007's Shadow Puppets. The film begins with a woman waking up in a padded cell. She's played by Jolene Blaylock from Star Trek Enterprise, and she has no recollection of who she is at all. She has no idea what her name is. She doesn't know how she got there. Um, all she knows is that she's dressed in a gray tank top and gray underwear. And her cell is locked. She can't get out. She's frightened to death. And then she hears these creepy noises that scare her even more. And then the lights go out. Um, there's a power surge. The lights come back on. And her cell door is unlocked. She escapes her cell, realizes she's in a mental institution. And she meets up with more strangers. Um, two of them are famous actors. One is James Marsters, who play Spike on Buffy and Angel, and Tony Todd, who obviously is a horror legend. And all three of them, plus other characters, all stereotypical characters, start um, trying to find an exit out of this place, trying to figure out who they are. And along the way, they're being chased by some shadow creature who um, creates these shadows on the wall and has these long, pointy tentacles that stabs through his victims and I guess swallows them, I guess as energy or something. And along the way, they start to realize that someone within their group knows what's going on here. Apparently, they run into this man strapped to a chair. Apparently, he had his mind wiped. And they find out that several more people had the same experiment done to them. And since there's nine characters, obviously, there's an odd person out. And this person is the one that was in charge of the whole deal. He's within the group. And this creates paranoia among the characters. So not only do they have to fight the shadow creature, but they also have to fight among themselves. Shadow Puppets has a very interesting premise, but its execution is very flawed. Um, this is pretty much due to the script. It's just very generic. Extremely cliche. I mean, this film is cliche 101 horror. I mean, what can I say? The black guy dies first, which I just laughed at. I just thought it was funny. Um, the characters are all stereotypical. I mean, we have the nerd, we have the slutty girl, we have um, the angry black guy, we have, you know, the main girl, the ma main male. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just very much, you know, been there, done that. Um, same goes with the Cube concept, you know, Saw took it, you know, it was done in the Twilight Zone before Cube even came out. And it'll still continue to be done. I mean, this is not a concept that's, you know, going away anytime soon. At least it's a good concept, it's an interesting concept, and it's used actually pretty well here. But, you know, it'd be nice to see something original for once. Um, the dialogue is very generic, predictable dialogue, I mean... They, I mean, people talk like people, but at the same time, you kind of know what's going to happen. You kind of know who these people are just by them talking. Um, that's pretty much the only character development they have, which kind of sucks. I kind of wish they were a little bit more developed as characters. At least some of them I wish were more developed. But I guess the excuse is they have amnesia, so you can't really develop characters like that. But I wish there was more of that. Um, the villain... The guy who is faking the whole amnesia thing is pretty predictable from the beginning. I figured it out the moment I saw the character, I went, up. Oh, that's the guy. And I was not surprised by the revelation. But, you know, I guess, you know, some people might not get, get it right away, so, hey. Um, the Shadow Monster, again, interesting concept. It's not a thing that's been done in a lot of horror films. You know, I love you know, the idea of playing with shadows and light, the fear of dark darkness. I think that's great. But it's not enough of it in this film. As a matter of fact, the monster is really only in the film pretty much towards the final act. He does appear now and then, but it's not, it doesn't make much of an impact, really. Um, the origins of the monster are not explained at all, which is a problem. This film has a lot. They don't really explain things as well as they should. Um, I have no idea what the purpose of this monster was to begin with. I don't know if this was the reason why this uh, mind wipe experiment was done to begin with, to erase the memory of the monster, or to erase the fear of this monster. I really don't know why this monster was even around this whole 
lab. I guess it was an experiment and people found out about it and they just might mind wipe their minds or something. I really don't know. Um, also, the monster has weaknesses, obviously. The biggest one is light. Obviously, that's cliche, but it makes sense. But then it goes into something else where this idea of you wear, if you wear clothes, then the monster will attack you. And it makes no sense to me because these people are wearing clothes right from the beginning. I mean, underwear and a tank top does qualify as clothes, right? So I really didn't get the whole idea. Plus, we see the point of view from the monster looking at his victims. And even if there's skin is exposed, he still sees them pretty damn well, so I didn't get what the point of that was. And the ending of the film, there's two endings. One ending is pretty predictable and it's pretty funny. I won't spoil it, but I think it's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen in my life. Um, the second ending, I guess, is the epilogue, and it's not needed at all. It's just a waste of two minutes. But it does have the most memorable piece of dialogue where one of the characters says, Yesterday we were born, and today we live. <sighs> what else can I say about this script? Direction by Michael Winnick was above average. Um, the film is paced well. It does move quite quickly for 100 minutes. I thought it was actually shorter than it was, so that's a good thing. Um, cinematography by Jonathan Hale was actually pretty well done. I think the film was shot at digital, maybe a two, three million dollar budget. I thought it looked pretty well for that bunch of money, and the picture did look nice. Um, there was lighting issues though, especially in the first scene where the shadow monster attacks one of his victims. It didn't make sense in terms of the monster character since the monster hates light while would it attack someone in broad light, so it kind of didn't make sense there. Um, the editing at times was a bit troubling. Um, there was moments where I could notice the actor was being dubbed by, I guess, another take where they dubbed it in the studio, um, where their mouths would move, but the words wouldn't match. So it was kind of funny, at least. Um, there is some tension in the film. I thought the set locations were excellent. Um, it created a lot of atmosphere for the film. You know, I just love the fact that these guys woke up in a mental institution. I think that was a pretty cool idea. I think whoever created that idea deserves a pat on the back. As for the CGI, um, the movement of the shadows I thought looked great, um, but the monster itself was problematic. This monster was not scary at all. If you've seen the smoke monster from Lost, you know exactly what this monster looks like. And I would have been cool with that, except that they decided to add in this face for the monster. And I just died laughing. This monster looked ridiculous. And it really hurts the film because I should be terrified by this monster, or at least creeped out by him. I was just laughing every time he appeared. I mean, if it was just smoke, great, but don't add a face to, to a monster like that. Especially if the face looks so fake and cartoonish. So, yeah, it was a mixed bag, but... The picture looked nice, the direction was decent, I can't really complain too much about the visuals, an amateur effort, and it looked pretty damn good, so. Shadow Puppet is not very edgy at all, um, the language wasn't a big deal, I'm sure they cursed every now and then, but I didn't really notice it. There is nudity, um, actress Natasha Alam shows us her boobs, shows us her ass, I mean, beautiful woman. Um, and there's people in tank tops and underwear, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, the violence is pretty tame. The monster kills people by impaling them with their tentacles. There's not a lot of blood. There's no, you know, decapitations or mutilations or anything like that. There's also stabbings and gunshots. Pretty generic violent stuff. But they didn't have a big budget to really pull stuff like this off, so I understand that. I would probably say this would maybe a hard PG-13 movie, maybe a soft R, just for the nudity. Um, but yeah, it's not you no know, very controversial, very violent movie. I mean, it's a pretty tame film. The acting was a mixed bag. Um, Jolene Blaylock, who is the lead of the film, was off and on many times during this film. There were times where I was very much convinced by her. She has a presence about her. 
She's a beautiful woman, so it was easy to watch her. But there were times when she got, you know, during the more emotional scenes where she really became laughable to look at. I mean, her reaction was so forced. When she would scream, it was so fake. I just started laughing. I just thought she was pretty bad in a lot of moments, but she was also pretty decent in others, so she was a mixed bag. Um, James Marsters was by far the best actor in the film. He took this role seriously. I totally believe his character. I didn't think he was forcing anything or faking his way through this. I really bought everything he brought forth here. I think he's very underrated. Um, I know he's a huge fan based from the Buffy and Angel stuff. I am one of those fans. I dig him a lot. He's one of the reasons why I actually watched this film and it was worth watching him. I thought he did a great job. I just wish he was in a better film actually. Tony Todd also very good here. Um, he has a lot of attention and comic relief to the film and he has great timing. He brings a lot of, you know, horror class to this film and I think he should have been in the more actually. I don't think he was in it enough for me. But when, whenever he was on, he was on. He has a great presence about him. I thought him and Marsters had great chemistry together. They had a lot of scenes together. I thought they were very good together. Um, the other actors are from, went from decent to pretty bad. Um, Mark Winnick, who was the brother of the director, played the nerdy guy. I thought he was pretty good. And then there's this girl. I think her name is Diana Nicole Baxter. She plays the annoying girl. I thought she was, wasn't that great. I just wish she had died sooner than she did. Um, but yeah, the acting was okay. I'm rating Shadow Puppets a very small two howls out of four. Um, the script isn't great, but the acting and even the direction saves it from being total trash. Um, like I said, it's very predictable, very cliche, but if you're a fan of Jason Marsters, Tony Todd, even Jolene Blaylock, I think it's worth a look. It's on instant watch on Netflix until July 1st, so you have about a week to watch it. I'm sure it'll be back in the near future after that, but it's not a film I would rush out. I would really rush people to watch. It really isn't. Um, but it was a decent time. I can't complain. I can't say I'm wasting my time watching it. It was just there for me. Um, decent time filler, mediocre, average, generic horror film that could have been a lot better since the premise of it was actually pretty cool. So that's all I gotta say about Shadow Puppets, and until next time, stay scary.